Of all the tracks that I've ever made, Phoenix is my favorite, really by far. And that's really saying something because I made it in February of this year, and since then I've made a lot of music, but it's still in the top spot, despite normally the trend being that you get better over time. And I think I have been getting better, I just think that with Phoenix, there was something special about it. So I want to analyze and dissect this track in this video, uh, talk about the composition, talk about the sound design and everything in between, and then the track will play at the end of the video. And if you just want to skip to the track, then here's your time for that. And yeah, I'm normally not self-serving or boastful on this channel, and I hope that I'm not coming across too strongly like that here, but I am a little bit prideful with this song because... Come on, give me a break. Can I be prideful, like, once? Come on. Anyway, um, I really am proud of it, and I hope you enjoy it. So, let's get into it. So here is the project file. Uh, this is the playlist view, at least. And you can see that it is a behemoth of a track. It is a huge track. It uses over 50 mixer tracks. Actually, maybe about 50, because there are a few that like are in here that aren't being used. Uh, but it uses about 50 mixer tracks, and typically I use 20 to 30 for a track. So um, it's pretty significant. And um, I think that's really cool um, that it's just such a big track. And that makes sense because it is a very diverse track. And I think that's that we'll see that kind of the defining characteristics of this track are that it is diverse and that it has huge dynamic range. So this is where it started right in here. Okay, let me zoom in. This is where it started um, with this little beat right here. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Yes, that's where it started, right? So you can't see this, but the project file was named February 9th, some sweet electro jazz. And uh, that was this, some sweet electro jazz. One technique that I used here on these chords that's quite interesting is um, check out this. Pay attention to this knob right here, or this, uh, this slider. So you see what it's doing is that every single time a chord hits, and this is something that I manually did with automation, that's what these things are, right? It's changing the unison pitch thickness. What the heck does that mean? So unison is when a, a signal, um, the signal of the synth, is copied, and then variations are done to the copy. And one of those variations is pitch. The pitch of the copy is altered a little bit. Uh, right now the order is two, which means there's a total of two signals, so there's only one copy. Um, and uh, that copy has a pitch variation relative to the original, and that pitch variation is being changed very rapidly, because when it's up here, it sounds like this. Right? But then it comes back down here really quickly, and we get a much smoother sound. Um, and it's, it creates a little bit of an interesting effect. I quite like it, you know? Yeah. The intro is actually one of the last things that I added onto the track. It's actually a chord progression from an orchestra piece that I composed about a year ago. Um, and I composed it for my school orchestra, and we sight-read it, but we didn't end up performing it. Um, but it's this chord progression that was in there that I really liked and I didn't want to get rid of, so I kept it in and, and used it for Phoenix. So um, I just play through it. Um, there's some vocals here, but we don't need to hear those right now. atmospheric, let's say. And then it has this like reverse piano thing and it goes into that sweet electro jazz thing. And uh, yeah, it's interesting because this is a reverse piano but neither of these sounds are a piano. This is a string patch and then a synth patch, but the transition between them is a piano, which is interesting. But uh, the reverse piano effect is something that is used um, not infrequently. And uh, 
The other thing is that I did change the end of this chord progression from what it was in my orchestra piece so that it would go into this. This chord progression starts on an F major 9 chord, and uh, so I, I went with a C major 9 at the end here, and it kind of adds the voices. It just has like a C major chord here, and then you know, you see how it's adding this note. That note is the seventh, and then that note is the ninth, and then we have this reverse piano playing a C major nine, and then that goes in. So we have that 5 1 resolution, um, and it's rather satisfying, but it also changes the texture. So this is what I was saying about how the track is diverse, and we'll see this over and over again in this track is that the texture keeps on changing, um, but there are nice transitions between them, and uh, I think it's still very uh, co uh, continuous. I think it's still very continuous track. So um, w an interesting thing right here is that these these things right here, so this is like right here some background ooze, it's just singing, and uh, up here is a little bit of a piano solo which really solidifies this track as having jazz in it because it's an improvised solo and that's one of the defining characteristics of jazz um, along with all the big chords which it also has. Um, and uh, so those two things were actually recorded on my uh, on my laptop microphone like just my laptop's own built-in microphone which of course is is a terrible quality microphone um, but with the ooze they're pretty quiet and they've got a lot of reverb and so they actually don't really even sound lo-fi but they're they're kind of in the background and so they worked because i liked the performance that i did for that recording and i don't think the audio quality was bad enough to merit uh, a re-recording uh, and so i kept that in there and the piano on the other hand i kind of went with the lo-fi sound and, and took it to the extreme so it sounds very lo-fi. You can hear that. Like that, right? And so I believe that's this guy. So you can see this is the EQ that I used for it and uh, you can see what I was doing there which is this is a pretty typical lo-fi curve. It has a little bit uh, of a weird tail going downward like normally you'd see more of a cutoff but uh, since it was a high piano I didn't worry about that too much but uh, yeah in, in general if you want to make something lo-fi you cut off the top of the treble you boost the high mids and then you kind of taper off towards the bottom end and uh, obviously you know you tweak it until it sounds good that's ultimately what matters but uh, in general that's a good approach to take to make anything sound lo-fi. So then we have this little guy in here, and this is a synth that kind of has a has a low pass filter that opens up, and it has white noise as part of it. So it's this three times OSC plug, and it has white noise as part of it, and white noise really helps to fill it up. And it's really quiet. So if we if we play it like here, for instance, right? And so if we compare that to with no white noise, it's not that different. But it's in there, and it adds texture, and it kind of fills up the space, um, and uh, I think it really helps and really sounds nice. So then we have this buildup that goes into the drop. I'm not going to play the drop right now for <laughs> the reason that my computer will totally uh, blow up and crash if I try to do that, because the drop is extreme. And I'm also screen recording right now, and my computer is kind of wimpy, so it's probably not going to work. So I'm not going to play it, but you'll hear it at the end of the video um, in, in the full track. And uh, trust me, it is an epic drop. And it's, and it's way more epic when you listen to it in context, so I probably wouldn't even want to play it now anyway, um, because you really want to get that context. Because again, talking about the contrast in this track, it's like basically super chill for all of this like for for a minute and a half it's really chill and then we have this 16 bar build up and then it's super big it i mean it's super big and um it's got this gigantic edm thing now i, I do want to look at these chords though um and just mention the fact that they're, they're not typical chords that you would find in an edm drop they're they're rather more complex um, and you know there aren't any altered tones or any of that you know we're, we're staying pretty diatonic here but, um, you know, I played them on my keyboard, so they're very ergonomic chords, um, and uh, they're mostly stepwise, like almost every single transition between voice to voice is stepwise. So we've got a couple of here that are minor thirds and a couple here that are minor thirds, and this to this, you could consider that a minor third, although this really goes to that, and that's just an added note, but, you know, regardless, there are, there are at most five voice transitions that are not stepwise, and, I mean, there's probably a few dozen different uh, voice transitions in here, maybe, maybe even more than that. 
Anyway, the chords are great, and they sound awesome, and um, I'm sure you will love that drop. Trust me. Anyway, <laughs> then out of this huge drop, again, contrast, right? Contrast changing in texture, diverse sounds. We get into this, which is pretty much a piano solo. It starts out as pretty much just piano solo. <laughs> And uh, it has these chords underneath it, but they're very quiet. You can see this is a low-pass filter on them, and it's very, very low down. So there's not much happening with these chords. So if we play these chords by themselves, very quiet at this point in the song. So um, they get louder, though. This is their automation clip for the uh, low-pass filter. And they get louder here a little bit, and then they really get loud here, because then we have another 16-bar buildup into a second drop. And the second drop is uh, very similar to the first, but it's even bigger. And um, you'll hear that, and it's so awesome. I love this drop so much. Um, it might be my favorite drop. Like, this, this track as a whole is absolutely my favorite track that I've ever made. It might also have my favorite drop that I've ever made. Um, it's, just, it's just fantastic. Anyway. So we've got this piano solo section, and um, it's really chill, as you'd expect. Um, and uh, then we get back into a buildup, and we get huge again. So at this point, you know, the main sounds that we've been hearing were strings, synth, a lot more and a lot different synth, and then piano. And, and so we've got all these different things that are taking over the track. And um, we do have lyrics here. There are some lyrics here. That's what this guy is right here. Those are lyrics. So we've got singing, and, and we've got all sorts of uh, dynamics going on, and we've got this diversity of, of texture. And uh, then we go through our second drop. So at the end here, we have just these two parts, nothing else, and uh, we've got this electric piano. Right, so I'll just skip around a little bit there um, so you can hear that. So it's actually the same electric piano sound um, coming from my keyboard there, recording into um, into my audio interface that uh, I used for Dream Slinger. If you watched my video about Dream Slinger last week, it's the same. It's the same one. Uh, and then we've got some vocals here, and there's actually a Bartok quote. This is where the classical influence comes in. There's a Bartok quote right here. <laughs> And that is from his uh, Romanian dances. And, you know, depending on whether you're using the colloquial definition of classical or the, uh, the music history definition of classical, um, Bartok may or may not be classical. But uh, anyway, that's, that, is a, that is a thing from one of his pieces. And uh, so I say there's a little classical influence there. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the track. It goes super chill again. And it sounds amazing. And uh, I hope you really enjoy it. So there you go. There is Phoenix.
Thank you so much for listening and, and watching and all that. I really hope you enjoyed that track, and I, I really do because that track was just... I, I spent so much time making it, and I love it so much, and um, I hope that you love it half as much as I do because that's... It's, it's really great. I think it's great. And um, I don't normally ask people to, to share the video or to like or subscribe or any of that because I think that if you like the video, you will like it. And if you want to subscribe, you'll subscribe. I don't need to tell you about that. But um, in this case, if you could share, um, if you could share this track, whether it's sharing the video or just sharing the track itself, um, that would mean the world to me, and I, I think Phoenix is a really good song, so I think like you would also bring some enjoyment to whoever you share it with, because I'm confident in its, in its quality. Um, regardless whether you do that or not, if you've gotten this far, then you watched through it, and um, I thank you sincerely for that, so there you go. Thank you so much for watching. See you next video. Bye.